auto auctions, Continental's green tires, Ford and GM. Welcome to another automotive news update. Hi, it's Elizabeth from the Homework Guide team. If you missed the big guys, stay tuned to our community page for updates on Kevin's recovery. Your continued outpouring of prayers and support has been tremendous and appreciated. Today's menu includes Mannheim Auctions is fixing cars, Continental's green tires, the trendy Ford Maverick, General Motors subscription services, and goodbye to the dead models from 2021. Remember, you can use the cool new chapters feature below to fast forward to exactly the part you're looking for. Let's roll. In our previous auto news update, we shared how CarMax is paying $3,000 more per vehicle at auction. One of the biggest auto auctions, Mannheim, states that they expect used car prices to stay high through spring for sure. A few years ago, cars would be at an auction an average of 23 days before dealerships bought them, but in September 2021, it was only 18 days. And used cars used to sit on dealer lots an average of 44 days before being sold, and that's down to 37. But even though dealers are forking out more cash for cars at auction, only about 25% of a used car inventory comes from auctions, which means dealers shouldn't have to be charging such ridiculous markups on all their used cars. But in this market, it's, hey, inflation for everyone. Experts agree that used car prices will remain high until well after next tax season. Now, Mannheim, they don't just turn cars over to dealers. They have actually refurbished more than half a million vehicles for retail since 2015. And from 2020 to 21, Mannheim's reconditioning business jumped 60%. They now have 50 reconditioning centers, 70 wholesale facilities, and 900 certified technicians. I chuckled to myself as I read this because earlier this month, we published a video titled, Should I Fix or Sell My Car? I think the evidence is clear here. Mannheim is fixing more cars than ever before, trying to make a little more of perhaps some higher mileage, slightly more beat up vehicles. That means that we, the consumers, can do the exact same thing. Mannheim's average time for reconditioning is nine days, while most dealers are able to turn their vehicles around in four to five days, depending on the parts shortages and if they even care to fix them. Many Homework Guy viewers commented last month that they love Continental tires, so I, I couldn't pass up on an update from them. Continental, the German tire and auto parts company, is celebrating its 150th birthday this month, but that doesn't mean this company is getting old. CEO Nikolai Setzer, appointed in 2020, shares that the vision of Continental is to become as strong in our hardware business and our heritage on one hand, but on the other, to become even more digital, software-driven, and software-inclined. Setzer wants the company to be an industry leader for high performance in-vehicle computers, specifically for assisted and automated driving technologies. Continental also has a new green concept tire made partly from renewable and recycled materials such as plastic bottles, dandelions, and vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. The plastic bottles turn into polyester, which replaces the traditional polyester yarn that's being used right now. The dandelions in 5 to 10 years will start to replace some of the natural rubber. Wow. Setzer is growing dandelions on purpose for experiments and production. I can just see the look on the Germans' faces when they drive by fields of dandelions and think to themselves, hmm? what are they actually trying to grow out here? Oh. Clearly, they are not selling dandelion wine or jelly. This new green concept tire weighs 40% less than the average comparable tire, and that's a lot because rolling resistance is affected by the weight and mass of the tire itself. With 25% less rolling resistance, the range for an electric car equipped with these tires is said to be 6% longer. Continental has raised its tire prices to cope with the effects of the pandemic and like everybody else, feels the microchip shortage will continue to impact the auto industry for another 18 to 24 months, which will bring us to 2023. Ford is taking a new approach with the 2022 Maverick pickup and that will offer more than 150 accessory options. But Ford's YouTube channel shows customers how not to buy them. There's a video of how to build a bicycle rack for $50 worth of lumber and screws in lieu of the dealership's hitch-mounted two-bike carrier from Thule, which runs $489. In another video, they demonstrate how to make a light rack for about $60, even though Ford offers a $200 bed light kit from Lumen. The series is called Hack Your Maverick and targets younger, budget-conscious, and kind of trendy buyers. Ford hopes the Maverick will build loyalty to the level of the F-150 and Mustang. The Maverick has a lot of customizable options and neat features, but with the timing of its release in the middle of a chip shortage and inflated car prices, these younger buyers will also have to be patient and plan ahead to likely factory order these small pickups. Best of luck. CEO Mary Barra of General Motors also wants to re-envision her company in order to produce high revenue. Surprise, surprise. She wants profit margins to be at 14%, but not in the price of the GM vehicles. No, 
She wants to stretch the typical one-time vehicle transaction into recurring purchases, meaning software and subscription services. Okay, but with Apple and Google already all over new vehicles and all the driving apps available, I'm not sure how GM is going to bust into this market. But GM's OnStar service has been around for 25 years. With the push of a button or the tap on the OnStar Guardian app, drivers can be connected with an operator to assist with safety and security issues and be patched to a local dispatcher. OnStar has 4.2 million paying subscribers currently and will generate about $2 billion in revenue this year at a margin of more than 70%. And Barra wants to grow OnStar and to include vehicle insurance. With a few more tricks up their sleeve, GM is looking for an additional $80 billion in annual revenue by 2030. Now, if you're a business-minded person, this makes total sense. A company doesn't always need new customers to make more money. The better strategy is to get every existing customer to spend just a little more. With subscriptions being low cost and high profit to the company, this tact is perfectly logical. Now, is it probable that GM customers will want to pay more overall for their car and these services every month? That's debatable, so drop a comment below. Do you currently use GM's OnStar or other vehicle subscription services? How much are you willing to pay for these or are you not impressed? And if you want to know more about this business topic, check out Kevin's book on Amazon. Is that the best you can do? It's full of wise business savvy and some funny stories of how we often thwart our own efforts to improve ourselves. GM, is that the best you can do? Well, we'll see. Before we say goodbye, I'd like to take a moment of silence for the 2021s that will no longer be with us next year. Well, if you're keeping score, the sedans are losing to Team SUV, but I digress. Honda Clarity EV, Hyundai Veloster, Mazda CX-3, Mazda 6, Polestar 1, Toyota Land Cruiser, Volvo V60, Volvo V90, and Volkswagen Passat. All right. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us a great big thumbs up and please always remember to comment below on our videos and share them with your family and friends. Comments help boost our searchability and others to get homework guy content too. The entire homework guy team is here to represent you, the car bar, and that's what we love to do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. As Kevin always says, you guys rock. I'm the amazing Elizabeth. Gotta go. <laughs>